Welcome to another episode of EV Rider. This week we've got something unusual. We've got a 1974 Super Beetle, but it's got the heart of a Tesla in the sense of the battery pack that Mark Gilbert here has put into it as he has converted the old air-cooled VW into a modern day EV. Mark, what made you decide to turn this classic into an EV? Well, I retired about five years ago and I was an aircraft mechanic, um, but I didn't have a strong electrical background and I've been watching videos by this guy named Jehu Garcia and he's out in California and he's closely associated with EV West and he's got a 1957 Samba bus that he converted and I followed his videos for a couple years before I even thought about making a move and when it finally came time to do it, I ran across this article on a Super Beetle that this guy in Texas had made and he runs a company called Hawkeye Innovations LLC. So I got with him and we kind of teamed up and decided on what parts we we're going to use and how much it was going to cost and he was also going to offer some technical assistance if I got in a jam. So I pretty much decided that I was going to go in that direction. Okay, in the front here we have the reservoir tank for the motor controller chill plate, the Tesla Model S pump that goes down and goes through the tunnel and goes all the way to the back where the motor is. And this is your charging port up here. It's a J1772 standard type two charging port. So I had to relocate the 12 volt battery up here because I actually have Tesla modules in the floor that take up the space where this used to go. In the car, we have a Prius pedal to send the signal to the controller, but we also have a motorcycle e-bike throttle with a friction lock and then a switch to switch between the two throttles. And this thumb throttle right here is for regen. So I can dial in regen with my thumb. The throttle mapping is the same for both throttles. I don't have two separate maps. So that one, that throttle's slower response. This one's faster response. So like on a, on a Tesla, when you have a chill mode, so the pedal would be my chill mode, like being in traffic or parking lots or whatever. And then this is your not quite ludic ludicrous mode, but somewhere in between chill and ludicrous. So this is a thrill. Mark has graciously allowed me to take a drive in his EV Beetle. Now, right now we're in a neighborhood, so I can't floor it yet. <laughs> but one of the first things that's so cool about an EV is even with a manual transmission there's no need to shift so i'm in second gear i don't really need to shift at all but if i wanted to i could you're driving on the prius pedal right now but i have a motorcycle e-bike throttle down here with a thumb throttle that i can use for regen i can just dial in and it's, it sends a signal back to the controller telling it how much regen i, I want I, I think i have the, the regen set for a max of 30 percent which if you're going about 40 miles an hour that'll give you about 80 amps back into your battery all right so now i'm switching over to his motorcycle throttle and what a difference <laughs> compared to the old air needles <laughs> well it's three times the power so it's it's not blistering fast but it's way faster than the 40 horsepower gas engine that came in this thing as you can tell well i gotta tell you this is <laughs> a wonderful conversion. I think a motorcycle throttle is actually more enjoyable than a pedal. What's the uh, what's the furthest you've driven in it so far? Okay, I've, I've done a couple trips of about 90 miles, and most of that was not over 60 miles an hour, so I still had 20% battery left. For someone that might want to go ahead and do a conversion but use uh, high-performance street tires, what do you think this car could do sustained on the interstate? Oh, I've had it, before I put the off-road tires on it, I've had it over 90 miles an hour in third gear. In third gear. Yeah. Of course, if you went fourth, it would, in theory, spin the motor just a little bit less. Yeah, I think I went into a couple calculators and I, and I saw a theoretical 140 miles an hour in fourth gear, but you have to take into account re wind resistance and all, sure. all that. And these car Beetles aren't the most aerodynamic cars no. in the world. So Here's gonna be something a little bit fun. I'm gonna go ahead and shift. <laughs> so I put the clutch all the way in, I've gone to third gear, <laughs> and the beauty is this car doesn't give a hoot about me changing gears. Okay, you're, 
RPMs dropped to 2200. They were probably up about close to four. So it does actually make a difference. And yeah. so let's go all the way to fourth because we're not going to be able to stall it out anyway. I'm doing approximately 25 and what? 1300. So it does make a difference. Why EV versus gas? Well, when I first got this car, the, the gas engine wasn't running, so I got it running just so I could uh, evaluate it to sell it. And I didn't realize what a miserable experience it is driving a gas-powered VW. Or you had forgotten. Just so clean, yeah, because I had driven them like yeah. 40 years earlier. So I decided, man, yeah, we're just going to take a risk and see what driving it. I, and I wanted to learn what, what EV cars were, were all about. And yeah. the best way to do that is just dive in and start experimenting. And of course, Beetles are one of the easiest conversions to do because most people are not going to worry about things like air conditioning and heat. So I do want to point out to the viewers, this is far from a modern car. It doesn't have power steering. It doesn't have a lot of the amenities that modern cars have. In fact, you don't even have a radio in this car. Nope. Let me ask you this, for somebody that might want to do a conversion but add modern amenities, say for example they had a Camaro and they wanted power steering, they wanted air conditioning and, and you know, Android Auto and all the rest, how hard would that be to pull off? It probably wouldn't be that bad. Uh, one of the selling points of the guy in Texas that I'm working with, uh, Hawkeye Innovations, his uh, systems control module is, is can be set up for different case uses like if you have power steering and all that he can put in relays into the box that'll power all that stuff up so would he literally customize it to the, yes. the specs in fact the box i'm using is what he calls his basics box which is what most vws use because they don't have power steering or power brakes and all that but if you need all that stuff I th in fact i think he's done uh, like to toyota silicas that have accessories that need to be run and he'll build that box to meet whatever your needs are. And I put a 12 volt display in here and I can actually see my DC converter working now. So when I turn the key on, it'll read like 12 volts. And then as soon as the contactor goes, the DC converter comes on and then that starts reading like 13.9 volts. So it's just like being in a car when your alternator starts picking up. Okay, so battery underneath, underneath seat or module if you wanna call it. And then back here we have the remaining three modules. And this is kind of an un unconventional setup, which a lot of people wouldn't approve of because there's no battery box other than a shield. So this is my BMS. This is a Ryan 2. It's got 30 cells that it's reading. And then this is my uh, Hawkeye Innovations LLC uh, systems control module. And this controls all the key on stuff. Like you turn your key on and it... Uh, it wakes this up and it also wakes the controller up and then it starts the process for for energizing the contactor in the back for the motor and then when you're charging it also uh, enables this to talk to the uh, charging cord it's a tesla pack okay five modules out of a model s approximately 27 kilowatts and that's good for about 100 miles Okay, this, what, what would you say your total weight on the Beetle is? Okay, before I did the off-road stuff, it was running right around 2,000 pounds. So the car actually gained about 160 pounds with all the electric stuff. And then I, and then since then, I've done off-road tires and a body lift, and I, I'm calculating that at about 100 pounds. So it's sitting right around 2,100 pounds. Do you love the sound of it? Oh, yeah. Everybody's like, oh, your car's so quiet. And I said, not when you're sitting in it. It's not... It's singing to you back there. I said, you got the world's biggest drill motor back there. Okay, in the engine bay back here, we have the second cooling system with a reservoir tank, Model S pump, going to the uh, heat exchangers in the front grill. This is your DC converter. It keeps your 12-volt battery, battery charged. This is your onboard charger. This one ha just happens to be a 3.3, but I have a 6.6 .6 waiting to go in. So your motor consists of a Hyper 9 uh, in motor with their integrated controller and the contactor. So you get this all as a package. So I'm guessing a lot of people don't have a true sense of how involved a conversion process like this is. But let's start with the question everybody is going to want to know. How much to do a conversion like this? Bought the car for $6,000, not running. 
ended up getting a lot of parts in about a month that were sitting on my workbench at my house and this is when it really started to sink in i just spent about 16 grand on batteries motor wiring and then all the associated boxes that go come with it like the bms and stuff like that and i'm looking at this pile of parts and i'm like i'm not really sure how this is gonna go <laughs> about how many years has this process taken okay i'm currently in about two and a half years away from when i first started for a traditional restore somebody that maybe has put a crate motor in say an old chevelle and you know really fixed it up put maybe disc brakes things like that do you think somebody with that type of knowledge can tackle a project like this probably because i just had basic electric knowledge you know doing stuff around my house running outlets um, upgrading stuff around my house i just did a lot of youtube research and then my guy in texas was always there if i needed to talk to him about how how to do this with the batteries or how to set the bms up or you know stuff like that You know, there's something about a classic car that you just can't replicate in an EV. So I think we're going to see more and more restorations that include a switchover to EV because when it comes to performance and driving enjoyment, EVs are just the way to go. I've had a wonderful time getting to check out Mark's Super Beetle and I hope you did as well. So if you enjoyed this episode of EV Rider, please give it a like and subscribe to my YouTube channel so I can bring you more adventures in EV motoring. And we'll see you again soon for another episode.